If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this motherfucking episode of Mind Pump. Yeah. Whoa, he's coming in gangster. <laughs> Adam, Justin, and myself have some interesting conversation. In the first 30 minutes, we talk about our incendiary IIFYM video on YouTube. We ruffle it's in fuego. some feathers. We talk about the parallels between religion and nutritional righteousness. Carbs are evil. Yeah. Then we talk about <laughs> we we talk about the uh, the health IQ quiz that we took. Uh, you can Shout actually out to those guys. You can actually take the quiz yourself to see what you qualify for. Let's a, see how smart you are. It's healthiq.com forward slash mind pump. Then we talk about Apple facial recognition with the new iPhone. Yeah. And the ease of buying and the loss of privacy. Uh, welcome to 1984. Whoa. Mm. We talk about Operation Mockingbird. Hi, CIA. And then we mentioned Organifi's new gold juice. Because we're trying to get Shauna to send it to us. Listen, Come on, Shauna. I've had it, and it's fucking amazing. Uh, we They are one of our sponsors. If you'd like to try out any of their products, go to OrganifiShop.com. Enter the code MINDPUMP, and you'll get a gigantic Discount. I want to taste that gold dust. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this individual is increasing their steps, trying to increase their knee, but it's cold outside, so they like to walk on the treadmill. Is it more beneficial for them to walk on an inclined treadmill holding onto the handles, or should they flatten it out, slow down a little bit, and not hold on? Try it backwards. The answer is going to surprise you. Actually, it will shock you. The next question was, how do we define training to failure? What does it mean to fail? Is that when your form breaks down? Or is it when you die? Which one is <laughs> which one is failure? Uh, and is it uh, something you should do to improve your fitness? The next question was, how do you balance training when you're trying to work a full time job, be a supportive husband, a new dad with a baby? Like, how do you get your workouts? How do you schedule them? What does a workout look like for someone with that busy of a lifestyle? I wish the day had thirty hours. Yeah. The final question was, we talk about target heart rate and how it's kind of outdated and a waste of time, but this person is a student of kinesiology, a trainer, and is teaching group fitness classes at a university, and they're still teaching them how to work out in heart rate zone. What the hell's going on here? Are we outdated, or are the universities outdated? Need some new textbooks. You know, the same ones that sell these textbooks for $500,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you guys. Uh, also, this month, uh, check this out. Our forum, which is probably our most valuable thing that we offer, you can enroll right now. It's the best place on the internet. For one time fee of $97 and you get in for life. You pay it once, you're in for life. Starting next year and forever there afterwards, you have to pay that fee annually. So this is the time to get access to our forum. Also... If you enroll in any of our programs, you're going to get access to that form for half off. Now, we are in December, and we all know what happens in January. Everybody gets super serious about fitness. Everybody wants to get on that fitness bandwagon. They don't have a plan, though. They don't know what to do. They just end up yeah. joining a gym, or they go back to doing their old you know, programs that didn't work before. Sign up for classes. Here's what we recommend. I'm going to lean on a treadmill and pay attention to my heart rate. That's here's, their plan. Here's what we recommend. Our MAPS Super Bundle. If you take all the programs, all of our MAPS programs that are included in the Super Bundle, it's about a year's worth of exercise programming. So in other words, 2018 is set up and planned for you. You can start January. You can hit the ground running. You'll know what to do every week when you work out. What exercises, how many sets, how many reps. You'll have me, Adam, and Justin teaching you the technique and the form of each exercise. Every three to four months, you change to a new program. One you know, one period of time, you're focusing on strength. and the time, you're focusing on aesthetics. Then you're focusing on athletic performance. Now you're doing body weight exercises or you're doing correctional exercises. It's amazing. It's never boring. You're, you continuously learn your body. By the end of that year, you're going to have much better fitness, more muscle, less body fat, and a much better understanding of your body. And the best part about the Super Bundle is it takes all those programs and it discounts them massively. I think it's over 25% off because they're bundled. And here's the second best thing. All of our programs always come with a 30-day trial. So what this means is you can enroll in the Super Bundle and literally try it out. In fact, I dare you. I dare you enroll in the Super Bundle. Follow it. Follow for 30 days. Do one month 
of exactly the program. Exactly how it's outlined. Just do it out, as it's outlined. If it doesn't blow your mind, just return it. We'll give you all your money back. That's how confident we are. Our return rate is one of the lowest in the industry. We've had an extremely low return rate because people are satisfied with the program. We'll always have that return rate because we want people to know that they can try it out. And if they don't like it, they'll get a refund and we'll have that forever. So the MAPS Super Bundle, enroll now, get started the right way. 2018, you'll get an offer to get the form half off and then you're in for life. You can find all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. There's a reason why Rogan goes three hours yeah. on his podcast. Oh, yeah. The first hour and a half is all Just getting to know each yeah, other. It's all, it's all someone someone's front, and then the second hour and a half is you know the real person. I, yeah, I agree. Sure. No, I agree with that. You know, first. so that's I'm, that's why I'm fucking over the Skype thing, dude. I'm so it's, yeah. it's so hard to interview over Skype. How, how can you it's have a terrible. like a genuine no. conversation with someone you just met over Skype? And yeah, then and then you fight over that space like you don't want to talk over them, but then they're talking over you as you know that you're trying to come in. Yeah. And they're just like blah, 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 blah. I, I, ca- I catch myself paying attention to my timing of interrupting That's so much that I'm not even in the conversation, dude. How yeah. funny! I'm like, is like it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. wait, waiting yeah. to say I, something because how funny is it though when you're you're like okay I'm gonna interrupt and then they don't stop yeah but then you're like no I'm gonna keep going because then they'll get the signal but like they don't you have to just like throttle all down so it's two people talking at the same time like that 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 and then That's finally be horrible right. for the and, listener and, and that wouldn't happen in person in person yeah. that doesn't happen in person no. you're you're yeah. not gonna get that because they're gonna see your mannerisms uh-huh. right I'm gonna be talking with my hands like, I'm looking at you and you're, I'm about to you're say all something. coming in closer like. I'm talking, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, yeah. I wonder if there's a, is there a good way like uh, where you can, I mean, I know through Skype you can see them, right? There's, there's, uh, there's video too. Is that really the best option? There's got to be, I feel like there would be a huge market for this. It would be cool if we could actually mount some cameras up on the ceiling and mm-hmm. have them like sh- shooting to us and then that, then there are the guests can actually like see us on and there. And we could see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at least they could see but us. But right? even Skype, it's not very, we, I did that once and it was weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was my worst interview ever. Oh, really? Yeah, because I could see the guy, he could see me, and then it wasn't... I don't know, it's not the same. It's just we got to get used to it, dude. Yeah. It's a skill like anything. I That's the bottom line. You, I, you, I blame uh, myself. Justin, Josiah interviews you t- later on today, right? Yeah, 3 o'clock. I was telling him I thought that was really... I think it's really cool that people are starting now to, to interview all of us individually because together we're mind pumped. Yeah. But each of us have like this. We're all very, very different. You yeah, know, we and have, have a, quirks, right? And have a different story and and bring something different to the table. And I think like in Mind Pump, you get the flavor of all of us, right? But like you could separate each one of us out. And I think there's a lot to get from all of us individually. So I think it's cool to see someone like him who's actually going through and interviewing each person individually mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. can kind of get it. Because I think that way there's going to be somebody. There's definitely going to be people that don't like me. Oh, be, I know. You know what I'm saying, yeah. there's, but there, there's also going to be people that totally identify because you know you hear my whole story and you're like, oh wow, the same thing goes for you and for Sal. Right. I think, so you want to get in a little more depth. Well, oh. Yeah. Speaking of not liking, do you guys see the all the the shit that the freaking IIFYM video did? Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> so so awesome. isn't it funny we got like so removed from like that tribalism Dude, why? stuff? Hey, here's some here's something for you. If someone talking about a food or a macro or a micronutrient triggers you. You have a fucking food issue. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna say it to you right now. If you get offended, you get angry. Yeah. If you talk shit, if it triggers you, yeah. you have an issue. You idiot. You can two like, bros that don't know shit, man. This changed my life, dude. You can <laughs> you, you can you can disagree. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing, but right, if it right. offends you personally. It's. I'm not joking. It is in the same category yeah, as religion weird. and politics. It is, no, it is really weird to me. So many. Of you the, bring up carbs or fats or yeah. paleo or IIFYM like and specific ratios, dude. This the, is what works. And the worst part is that people didn't even. Uh, some people didn't even watch the video. No, they didn't yeah. watch. The, they didn't watch the video. They didn't put an intelligent question. They just threw an insult. Lazy. This is stupid. It's yeah. like lazy okay. assholes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You. You guys don't. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Who are these idiots? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just shut off. I don't listen. I just it's know just, you're an idiot. It's terrible. I mean, and we, we literally say in the video that counting macros is an important step yeah. towards eating properly. Um, but it's a step. It's not the destination, and it can also cause a poor relationship to food. Literally, that's the whole gist of it. What I just said right here. Uh, now we go into depth with the video and give examples, and it's a lot of fun. And but that's what we say. People got so fucking mad. It's yeah. like a bunch of children. Oh, and then I love my favorite part is people were like, there was one. I don't remember her name. One girl on there that was really uh, breaking my balls, and she's like, 
yeah, we, we, you know, she's trying to get like Lane to go over there. We'll see what Lane has to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, Lane's my friend. Oh, right. interesting. Yeah. Listen to the episode I know we Lane. did with him. Yeah, and she's like, oh, I bet he. No, he, I bet he isn't. He, you, you were just saying that. I'm like, no, actually, he's. You know, yeah. you can yeah. bring him over. We'll talk. About him. Watch. Why don't you watch the video first, yeah. and then we can. Talk <laughs> actually, about we haven't it. talked to Lane in a while. Thanks for bringing what him back. What the yeah, fuck yeah. is going on here? Yeah, people, it's religion. Yeah. No, it, it very much so is. In fact. Sometimes I think I think we've kind of uh, loosened up on religion. I feel like, and I feel like nutrition has become more dogmatic. It's become crazier. I wonder why. Yeah, think about. Let's think about this for a second. Why? It's so strange. Why do? We, okay, I, I understand. Well, this is why. This is why. So with religion, <sighs> you know. It's always been that way with really. We've always divided people that way. Well, because it's who you are, right? Right. So, and you identify mm. with it, but that there's something that's not tangible about that. the The difference with food and nutrition is there's a tangible result, right? So they can actually someone can say, "My life was fucked up. I was depressed. I was angry. I was sad. I was obese. All these bad things are happening in my life." Then I started become. I became vegetarian, mm-hmm. and. My inflammation went down and my energy levels Even went the name. up. And, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. You go Tarian, right? You go, yeah. you, I go vegetarian. <laughs> Isms and Aryans. Right, right. And then yeah. I, be, and then I, then all these wonderful things happen that I can connect with. Like, you can't deny me that, hey, when I went vegetarian, before that, all these bad Hold things, on. now all these good things happen. So it has to be. Dude, I'm well, having all these breakthroughs right now. Let's, yeah. let's, if we list religion next to nutrition, right? Same, bro. Yeah. Same. Think about this. Religion, religion will give you nutrition. hard, it'll give you hard rules and laws that yeah. you identify with, like don't shave your beard Rigid or structure. don't have sex with before marriage or whatever, right? Yeah. You're, and then these these religious, excuse me, these nutrition nutritional you know ways of eating or whatever, have those laws also. Mm. Keto, don't eat carbs, eat lots of fat. Right. Paleo, only eat foods that yeah. run, swim, fly, or grow on a tree. Ve- ve- you know, vegetarianism, only eat plant-based foods. Okay. Now, so that is totally in common with all religion. That's, all that being said, why is it that like church has the most obese people I've ever seen <laughs> in my life? <laughs> what the fuck? Nobody got the memo? Yeah, the, well, you know, you feel like it'd be like a they're perfect not, blend for they're that. Not, they're not attached <laughs> like, to the food religion. Yeah, you know yeah they're like, oh, the, this one doesn't work for me. Yeah, this is in contrast <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, to my potlucks. And then with nutrition, you have your messiahs or your... <laughs> Right? Yes. You do. Yes. You, do. Yes. you do. You do. You yeah. have your paleo gods. Yeah. You have your IIFYM gods. You have your keto gods. Right. Oh, it's, yeah. it's so similar it to, to, to religion. And it's so many parallels. The, yeah. Yes. And it provides you with a certain level of control in, let's be honest, life is a lot of life. Is uh, the, Here's the secret to life I found is understanding that there's a lot you can't control and being okay with it. It's not that you can control everything. That's the opposite. You right. can't control everything. Yeah. And, but religion and nutrition, let's talk about nutrition for a second. It gives you that sense of control. Yeah. And people with really bad food issues like anorexics, bulimics, and stuff, they'll tell you the reason why they did that is it made them feel like they were, had power. Yeah. And I something. think, too, like it, it makes them feel like they're in the know. You know? And so like when, when people feel like they have this, this knowledge that other people around them don't have it, they're like it becomes this weird sort of elitism where uh they start talking to people differently like, uh, like it's like you the just, spiritual righteousness you just thing. don't know it's the spiritual you righteousness thing yeah. it's just yeah. just like the spiritual righteousness thing except for now it's nutritional righteousness uh, yeah it's like i know better than you know you know what i'm saying you're, yeah i read this book that tells me like, all about i can't this critically diet. think anymore you know this this changed everything that's yeah. why i remember when we first went to paul check's house why instantly like i fell in love with the guy because when i saw his library and was like dude this dude has got darwin the bible and yeah. fucking uh, like you know, everything. Dalai Lama and all, yeah, all, and more, right all every, every, every human thought. Yeah. Like, he's just like, like, okay, I'm gonna read that. Dude, I have so yeah. much respect for a man that is open minded enough to read uh, p- polar opposite ideologies, right? And the, and I feel the same way about nutrition. Like, if you attach yourself to any type, whether it be keto, veganism, IFYM, fucking whatever it is, if you identify with it, like, dude, the best thing you could possibly do is to challenge yourself to read outside of that, dude. Mm-hmm. Read outside of that, learn, try, see how your body responds. You know what the beauty is with it? The beauty with nutrition is that because the body's always changing, you will many times, oftentimes, learn the lesson the hard way. Mm-hmm. Like, many times you will. Many times you'll... For sure, you know is. keto for works sure. so great for me. I feel so good. I have so much energy. I can think so straight. And so then after, and then five years later, I'm having issues with my thyroid or my health or what's going on here. You know, and it's like your body's telling you like, okay, we've changed now. Let's try something different. Let's right. try adding something else. And same thing with veganism. Same with yeah. anything else. 
veganism in particular is uh, can be very, and this is why veganism uh, I think gets a bad rap in terms of like the fanatic fanaticism surrounding it because not only do they have the hard rules and laws or whatever. But they also attach uh, their the morality thing. to yes. it, right? So 100%. then it gets really, really. Yeah, well, and that's the part. Like, and I think you, I think you explain this really well. Uh, is that yeah, man? If you're somebody who doesn't eat meat because you do, you think it's cruel to animals, like I respect that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I respect that, and it's you know if that and to each their own. And I'm not going to argue yeah. that. I'm not going to debate sure. with you. But like at the same time, ignoring the fact that nature is insanely cruel. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it's like we try to make things as humane as possible, and yet, like, you go back to nature and you're like, "Oh my god, that's fucking horrific, dude!" After eating those chips, I'm convinced that we're we're going to bugs real soon here. For sure, dude. I like I like that idea. For sure, we're going to I, bugs. I don't yeah. care. As long as I don't see it's a bug. Like, don't give me a spider in the form of a spider. If you make it in the form of a cookie, oh, dude. I'll eat the fuck out of it. You know, I know you guys like spiders. Buy the, the Thrive Ugh. Market, uh, the Thrive Market chips that we just ordered. Like, yeah. dude, I struggled with the crunchy just the idea of the because, crunch because it's crunchy and it's a cricket. <laughs> like, it's like if it was worms, I think I could have done it. It's all shaped like a leg or like a wing. You're You're like, right. Oh. It's like the uh-huh. whole time I'm crunching in my mouth. I'm just thinking like crunching on a cricket. Yeah, cricket yeah. just seems like it would be crunchy. Have you ever seen, dude? So I. <clears throat> In football, there was this guy who's from Kansas. He was fucking crazy. And uh, he just grabbed this praying mantis that was like almost like, I don't know, six inches big. Like it was huge. Oh, wow. And he just took it and like somebody dared him to eat it. And he just like bit the head off and like put the whole thing in his mouth. All the legs are like coming <laughs> out. I was just like, ah, I could not believe he did that. You know what, dude? It's funny how brain uh, brainwashed, I don't know, for lack of a better term, how conditioned we are when it comes to foods. Like, yeah. How we're so grossed out by some things, but not by other things. And right. if you go to different cultures, it's like an, an everyday thing. It doesn't it's like phase, a French fry. It doesn't phase them whatsoever. Like so, my kids. Uh, so we obviously we, we grew up and uh, my my kids eat a lot of Italian food and a lot of stuff, which isn't that different from. I mean, Italian food is Western food, right? But because we're Sicilian, there are certain things that we'll eat that typical American kids may not be exposed to. For example, when we eat lamb meat, because we love lamb meat, sometimes we'll get the, the bone in the middle of the meat, and there's bone marrow in there. Mm-hmm. Now, you try giving bone marrow to an average kid at the age of seven or you know, Have you ever seen bone marrow? Yeah. yeah. They'll be like, I don't oh want that. It looks like jello. Now, we grew up fighting over that. Yeah. And my kids to this day, they don't know any better. They don't think it's gross because they're always, well, always given it to them since they were babies. So to them, they argue over it. But then if they have a friend over and they do that, the friend's oh, like, what friend the fuck are you eating? <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. Well, I've always found just the idea, it's so fascinating to me that, you know, we don't even think about how, like, the conditioning that you that you have grown up with, right, is what really dictates your palate and, like, what types of foods you like. And mm-hmm. it's like, the fact, you've trained yourself that way. So if you're, like, everything. an adult and you're like, oh, I hate this, or oh, no, it's like, dude, you conditioned yourself yes you, you can condi- actually unlearn you, that yes, yes you trained yourself to fucking be that it's not that all mexicans like mexican food and all indians like indian food it's that they were fucking yeah. raised in a family that <laughs> yeah. fed them refried beans and fucking tortillas yeah, their whole life yeah, yeah. if you put an indian kid in that same situation and put an indian kid with a mexican family at, at birth he would eat mexican yeah. food it just would fucking I, I don't know like, though i feel like i feel like everybody likes mexican food though. Oh, i love <laughs> mexican food it has oh. to be the number one it's food. the best it is it is the best and well, I'm, a, I'm italian well it definitely is where we live for sure because yeah. we're in the Bay Area. I mean, oh. San Jose is definitely one I'll of the better the places. One food. of the better places yeah, to find. Except for Menudo. though, I won't touch that shit. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, like Menudo. You're a Menudo? Menudo? No. I'm not a big Menudo fan. You know what that is, Justin? No. Uh, stomach. Oh, okay. cow stomach. Okay. Yeah. I've I've, I've had. Like, not, I'm not talking cow about the tongue. I'm not talking about the was boy that? band from the eight. From the <laughs> yeah, 90s. Menudo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, some, you ate them? Mexican version of pho. Yeah, pho. <laughs> pho. 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 I ate pho the other day. Oh, pho, yeah. Oh, pho is good. Yeah, dude. Pho is good. But I ate it at that place in San Jose that's, um, it's on, it's on Snell dude, and- my wife's addicted to pho. But it's a, it's a legit, have you ever been to a legit, like, wait, hold on. Where's pho from? Is that Vietnamese? Yeah. I think it's, okay. okay, Vietnamese. You ever been to a legit Vietnamese restaurant? Mm-hmm. Like, for reals? Yeah. Like, the, the signs on the walls are handwritten. Yeah, yeah. And they're playing Vietnamese music. And it's an old Vietnamese woman that's in charge. Wait, is the name like Fook or yeah. like Fook? Uh, it's Pho. It's I like something remember. that I always laugh because, oh. yeah. Oh, P-H-O is Pho or Pho, whatever you Pho, want. Yeah, I, I, anyway, so th- this place is legit like, and when you go in there, that's all that's there is Vietnamese people and nobody speaks English. 
and the food was amazing. Yeah, it was. It's the best hangover cure. Yeah, I've ever had in my. It's always the authentic places. Yeah, Yeah, it's really really good. Great finds. Uh, Did you guys take your uh, those health IQ tests? I did. Mm -hmm. So what did you think? Well, you and I scored exactly the same thing. Uh, One hundred eighty. What was your score? Yeah, one eighty six or something like that. One eighty six. Yeah. So was, I missed three or four. I can't, do you remember how many you missed? It was three or four, right? Yeah, and the one, there were ones that stupid that they. Missed. I was afterwards. I was like, I was taking the test. Like Katrina came in the house, right? <laughs> and uh, they were, they're they're kind of challenging. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like just common sense for a lot. There's some questions in there that are like you got to kind of know your shit yeah. to know this. And they and they kind of they present them in I like, feel like a Trump trick. heads would do well. Well, so it'd be interesting to it'd see. Be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what our audience, how like what the average like of our forum. I, I'd love Dude. for our forum to get on there and do it. So too. I think they're brilliant. Yeah. You know why? Why? So Health IQ is this uh, life insurance company for the listeners who don't know what we're talking about. And when you get life insurance, which is very important, especially if you have somebody that like a, a spouse or children or people dependent on you, very important to do that, especially when you're young because it's so cheap. When you're young and when you're older, it just breaks the bank. But this company specializes in uh, life insurance for fitness enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they did that is they noticed there was a market for it because when you go get life insurance... These companies many times they send representatives out to like like test you, do your blood, and yeah, shit. do your BMI shit, right? Yeah, and they do your BMI, and they're like, oh, you're obese, so your rate is this, and you're like, yeah, but I'm lean and muscular, you know what yeah. I mean? That doesn't count. So, Health IQ saw that there was a market for that, and so they developed uh, yeah. that's that's who they target. They consider us muscular people, so they have this test that you take online. You can actually go and take the test. It's uh, is it healthiq.com, Doug? Forward slash mind pump. Forward slash mind pump. So you can go take this quiz. And they ask you all these fitness questions. Now, there's two things that I see that come out of this. One is it's smart in the sense that by your score on this quiz tells them that you indeed are somebody that knows fitness. So maybe you get a better price. But on the flip side, from a sales perspective, yeah. fucking brilliant, right? Yeah, yeah. Because that now I take a test <laughs> yeah. and they, I get my score and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going with this company because they... Because they tested me, <laughs> they, they <laughs> get me. Yeah, yeah. They get me. So <laughs> no, no, it was, totally. It, it's smart, but it was it was more challenging. That I mean, I think there was some trick questions there. There were some things that I like. I the one like, I missed, yeah. the one that I missed that made me annoyed was because it was CDC guidelines it was off or of like old standards. Somewhat. One of them was yeah. like which of these diets was approved by I the whatever, that. and it was Weight Watchers. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm not gonna choose Weight Watchers. Oh, come on, dude. You can, you can <laughs> put that watchers. with anything. I'm not gonna choose that shit. <laughs> yeah, Weight Watchers. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can have that anyway. So no. that's that's the what's one of the ones that I missed. No, no, really I want to. I I'd love for some of our forum members to get on there and take it just to hear everyone's feedback. I'd like to hear where everyone scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It'd be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah. So I think my score was. I think we got one eighty six. Yeah, I screenshotted it. Yeah, I'll post it on the. Forum I actually screenshot it. It's on my other phone though, since because I got the new iPhone yeah. since then. Yeah. Anyway, which by the way. Is fucking Boom. awesome. The new right? iPhone. My, now that mine finally works, right, dude? Yeah. So I kept my old one too, right? So I have the I have the six plus. And then I have the iPhone X now, and it's crazy. I, I find it very fascinating how Apple does this, like they how they evolve, like the the smallest little details to make things faster and, and yeah. short. Like you just, I don't really, you don't really notice it because we because we naturally evolved. If you're someone who's bought like every iPhone, yeah, it's just kind of like gradually. Yeah. Kinda, so having both of them, it was the first time I really can compare because I'm also I'm using my iPhone X. I'm used to all the features. Then I go back to the the six, and then it doesn't respond the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, it, it is weird. And I remember, yeah, you even brought this up. Like I started using the, the uh, you know how like the facial recognition. I'm like, oh, it's cool to open the phone. And all that but like to pay and Dude. then get through that process with all my online purchases I was bro like, you like, know how much money i bl- how much money i've blown in the last three <laughs> week, three weeks since i bought this <laughs> that thing. is a dangerous side of Just it bro, it's easy to thousands of dollars not kidding because like, it's easy to buy stuff it's so easy once i put all my information in it got my credit card and everything like that and then it recognizes my face now like this just happened we're in the yeah, fuck we're yeah. i just i just bought another snowboard i don't even need another snowboard because i was in the theater waiting for the movie to come on with Katrina killing time talking to my brother about snowboards and I was like you know what I want another snowboard like snowboard yeah get on there good oh this is a good <laughs> deal but, yeah and recognize <laughs> my face what is it like you're buying it from like Amazon or like where are you buying yeah, it yeah yeah well this one I bought directly from the website but it doesn't matter wherever I'm shopping oh, really now if I just it, yeah, it recognizes my face all my all my personal payment information everything all comes I just have to confirm it isn't yeah. this a little <sighs> Maybe I'm just. A, it isn't. But you maybe know why? I'm an old fuddy. Because daddy, you know why? You're, you, you're scared. It's actually made it safer yeah. because it's my. Well, it's, I get that. Right, I get right. that part. But then there's the other part where now 
They have your fingerprint. They have your face. Well, they they've got the all your information. Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, here's, here's, <laughs> this is they, how, can, they can access this at any time. Th- this is how I look at that. Like, so, because I know there's there's two sides of that camp, right? There's like the you know my like my my, of my little brother, my little brother who thinks he's trying he's trying to stay off the fucking grid so much it's, it's ridiculous. And then you have the other people like myself who I'm like I accept it. I'm like I don't think the government gives two fucks about me. And I, yeah. I, I would be willing to offer up all those personal, those, that personal information to make my life as convenient as it just made my life like that. I love, I love it. I lo- it, it's dangerous because I know I can get yeah. out of control. Like I've literally like every day for the last three weeks, I've had something show up in my door. Well, from we Amazon. know, we know how powerful marketing can be, right? We know how pervasive it can be and how it can influence people. The better they know their customers the more powerful that, oh, that can yeah. become. It's going to penetrate everything. It's, it's just kind of weird. Well, that's how it's getting me. So I, it, it was started by Christmas shopping, right? So every year, Katrina and I try and get better and better about starting earlier and, or, and buying everything through Amazon so it ships right to the house and it's all boxed up. So I did that. We did that like back before Thanksgiving. So we got all our Christmas, most all our Christmas shopping done back then. But now... Because I did all this buying, all the advertising's coming to me, coming towards me, yeah. and it's all shit that I want. Just retargets so, and follows is, you everywhere. Look at my, <laughs> look at my fail. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll like, take look it. at this deal that just happened. Yeah, what? Yeah, oh shit! I just bought it. Yeah. What so, if it starts noticing things about your face too? Like you start getting ads for like acne medication. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like you look tired. You yeah. know what I mean? You might want to do some of those your, wrinkles. Your beard's Here's all some out of wrinkles. Or what if it? Like, oh, what, so uh. check this out. You know you can. Your, your pupils will dilate or constrict depending on if you like something or you don't like something. And there's a lot that they're learning you can tell oh about God. someone and what they're looking at <clears throat> just by observing their pupils and how their pupils move. What if it starts to learn how to read your pupils and so it you starts don't even to, have to hit the like button? It just well, knows. Think about it this way. So we're learning about internet. Well, think about your we're learning about too. internet marketing right now, right? We're learning yeah. about split testing. This is a big thing. There's a big thing in internet marketing where they would split test ads to the point where you're testing color, you're testing font, you're testing, and then you get the perfect ad. And trust me, this all makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. Imagine if they're just looking at your pupils and they're doing different things, and now you're getting like the perfect message. The Dude, perfect- I, I think that, I think the phones in the future will be able to pick up your core temperature and your heart rate, and they'll take all that to create a formula like, oh, look, his heart rate elevated, his yeah. palms got sweaty, his eyes dilated. He must really like He's this. half chub. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's ready. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> wow. No, I, yeah. I, I 100% so, think it's going on. So out. the reason why this, this scares me a little bit is because in the past, you've had this, uh, this unholy alliance of government and business where they partner together, and it usually starts off with like some bullshit like- I, I think it's already like, there. I know, dude. I'm a I, little. I, I get a little worried, man. I, I think it, yeah. I think they're already in cahoots. I think there's like th- think about like how easy totally. it is to manipulate people when you know all the stuff about them. And if you want to scare, like, one of the easiest way to get people to do what you want to scare the fuck out of them. That's all you got to do. Mm-hmm. So they, if once they can read people, and they know what tr- what you know things to to poke at, and they send it out or whatever, and start just creating this you know, the story that people start to follow. And next thing you know, we start hating each other, or we start hating this thing, or we start. I don't know, man. I mean, nothing nothing for so many years has been as powerful as government. And for the first time ever, I actually feel like companies like Amazon, like Google, like Facebook are becoming as powerful. And that and I think what's happening Well, is, they can't use force. That's about it, right? They can't sh- they can't kill you, they can't put right, you in Right, and jail. that's why they you could argue cross. that government's more yeah, powerful, yeah. right? Cuz technically we they could do martial declare martial law and fucking yeah, yeah, throw yeah. assault whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, technically government is, you know, can be physically more powerful, but from an, from influence influencing people, oh dude, I, oh, I yeah. mean, I would argue, I would argue that companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google are so years ago, more influential than so even the decades government. ago. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Operation Blackbird. I don't know. Maybe you can look it up for me, Doug, while I'm talking. Here. I think it's Operation Blackbird. Years ago, the CIA. This was uh, this was um, revealed in the Freedom of uh, Information Act, but the CIA came up with some plans to inject operatives in the media. To influence the public. This was like, I don't know, in the 1970s. Yeah. So who knows, dude? Of they could course be, that's still around. You know what I mean? They could, yeah. exe- could be executives at these tech companies and stuff that are just kind of doing their job, you know, kicking ass, but but they're also collecting from there. No, these, you know how many back doors they found yeah. to some of this stuff? Yeah. Didn't Russia find some back doors to some Apple products and then they started banning some of their stuff because they were, you know, there was like the CIA was able to spy mm-hmm. through some of this tech? 
it's coming it's to all, you. Yeah. I, I'm just, maybe I'm just scared of everything. I don't know. Yeah, you could you could go down that rabbit hole. Oh yeah. yeah. I you know and now I, I have anxiety. I, I think it's yeah. big. I think it's getting better though because we're connected. I think too, like things that are corrupt, bad, dangerous. You find out faster and easier. Now. Yeah, you do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there's that side of it, right? There's that. So there's the there's the side that we're all scared about. Like, oh my God, it's like moving so fast. But then it's like, yeah, but if somebody somebody who's evil, corrupt, or doing bad things, like it won't last long because mm-hmm. yeah. we we'll real quick here, yeah, it. someone will let you know real quick, like you. So I don't know. I think I think that those companies their their standards have to be much higher than the companies that were existed 30, 40 years ago. Like so, and I think that in I think that's better for everybody. I think I mean look at Look at how it's influenced us and what we're doing right now. Like trans, like we talk about all the time, how transparency is king, and like the future businesses or CEOs or owners of companies will have to. You you no longer can hide behind your brand. You have to be who you are, and and the more transparent you are, I think the more success you're going to have because the consumer wants it. They demand it now, and they want to know like who am I buying from? I can buy a T-shirt from anybody. Mm-hmm. Why am I buying a T-shirt from you? And now and now you have to put yourself out there. So it was Operation Mockingbird. Not Blackbird, uh. Mockingbird. Blackbird was something else. So Operation Mockingbird was a large-scale program of the CIA that began in the early 50s and attempted to manipulate news media for propaganda purposes. Mm-hmm. And you know why this happens, by the way? This happens not because <laughs> the CIA or, or the government says, we're evil, we want to like fuck with people. That could happen, but usually what happens is, hey, we have this major threat, you know, the Cold War. We need to go in and start to control things a little bit for the protection of people and then you never know who gets in years later now you've got shitty people running the right thing. it starts with good intentions right? yeah, yeah dude like there was that guy in the nsa uh who they found people who like spy on ex-girlfriends and ex-boyfriends because they have access to like oh, hack man. everybody yeah. you know it's just humans <laughs> right you know what i mean don't give them that much power <laughs> becky <laughs> that bitch scary. dude this weekend i forgot to tell you guys what i did this week so you know like two weeks ago i watched uh, predator with my son yeah Do you guys remember the second movie i was gonna watch with him uh, Could you just tell Alien. Recall? Alien. Oh, Alien. Oh, you watched dude, it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Was it too scary? No. Oh, wow. No, dude. We sat and we watched it, and uh, I told him. At first, he saw, uh, he looked it up, right? And uh, When I hit play or whatever, it shows the description. Did he see the movie Alien vs. Predator yet? Well, that's probably no, what he's leading that's into, That's why I'm right? setting it up. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Okay. See, Justin yeah. sees it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I showed him. Well, I thought his generation may have seen that already, and then you're no. going back. And saying, no, this he was is too worse. young when that came out. Okay. But he saw the description underneath, and he's like, 1979? He's like, this is going to suck. <laughs> and I said, you know what, son? I said, it's keep a classic. I said, I want you to keep in mind that this movie is as old as your dad when you watch it and it's going to make it that much better. And sure enough, you watch it and he's like, this is really good. He goes, I can't believe this was made in 1979. I said, I told you. The other thing that was funny too is we're watching, so this is a movie made in 1979 that's depicting the year 2034, I think. I think uh, that's yeah. when they're trying to depict. So you see their computers and shit and what they thought computers would look like. <laughs> yeah. Their oh, com- the, the computers in Alien, which are supposed to be futuristic, look <laughs> archaic. <laughs> <laughs> compared to the ones that we have now on like our iPhones yeah. and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's crazy when you think about that because you think about They like were the trying to make it look futuristic and it still looks like shit compared to the oh, real yeah. ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so cool. Uh, like Predator just like with the infrared, like that was this new thing. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, what's it, with seeing people that yeah. way? You know what I'm noticing? T- man, and I know Gary Vee talks a lot about this, about the, the future is everything is audio now, right? Like so where we're just going to be able to say, oh, Siri this, oh, Alexa yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know if you, Justin, noticed or not, but Siri, the way you can... I remember the first Siri, which was, I think, iPhone 4 oh, it's or 3, better. right? Oh 3 God. or 4? I don't remember which one it was. One of the... <laughs> one, and I remember... And I, I never used it because it was of repeating myself, repeating myself. Yeah. Like now, dude, the rec- the voice recognition on it is ridiculous. Like yeah. it picks up everything. My favorite is, um, it, you know, on the keyboard where you where you do the voice thing. And I was actually talking over it, and then I had a podcast running at the same time. And uh, so my my phone was mounted. Calm down, you know, I wasn't using it texting and driving. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm talking to it, and it was picking up everything. Right. And I was like, oh, shit, I actually have to turn off my radio because I didn't have to before. Yeah. You know, so. you guys know even when it's, when you, unless you disable it, it's always listening. You guys know that, right? Okay, that's fucking. It's, it hears everything. Damn it. N- yeah, so, I, I, so this is, here's turn, what trips me out. it off right now. Here's what trips me out. <laughs> what trips me out is I won't look something up. I won't click on anything. I won't do shit. I'll just be talking about something. And next thing I know on Facebook, I got a fucking ad following me. About the whatever I was just talking about. So they, they you crazy. can't tell me they, they they're not doing that. Of no, course they are. No, it's already yeah, it's already proven, dude. It's already proven that when you're if you're me- me- messaging and doing all that stuff, that they sell fucking all that shit, bro. They sell that information for sure. 
it's not coincidence at all that when you talk about something on Facebook to somebody else like that, that all of a sudden you're I don't like that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. I I don't care, you know. Yeah, whatever. I don't. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me because the only, what it what it does though it makes me aware of my own tendencies that uh-huh. I'm fuck. And I've always said this. I'm an easy close. Like, dude, I'm a sucker for sure. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Most really talented salesmen that I've ever met are the same way too. Like, I if someone gets me or closes me, and if I want something really bad, like I'm easy. Easily convinced. Sure. Like I, I don't. I, after the fact, I go like I have buyer's remorse and go like I probably shouldn't have done that. Like <laughs> yeah. oh, I got all this stuff going on. I have no yeah. business spending all this money on this right yeah. now. Like what am I doing? But I am a sucker for that. And so yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, and if you and I, I, I love. Have, the, I have a five hundred dollar juicer to prove it to. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I already gave it away. An espresso machine. Yeah, I already gave it away. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah the espresso machine. I got the espresso like, machine. I just, like I just go to the coffee shop. Fuck this. Oh yeah. dude. I know we have coffee on tap too, and you guys sometimes buy I coffee. Know. Oh, by the way, Doug, I brought more of those things over. Well, there, it so. runs out, so you know. yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh-huh. Have you guys? Did we get the? No. The, I already know what you're gonna gold. No, we still have not gotten it. Could you please text Sean again, please? I did. She said she said And it. I know Shauna listens to the show Shana, time. Shauna, nah. I'm going to stop talking about Organifi if you don't get me some of the gold juice. I don't, yeah. Sal kept it all to himself. It's so good. We I, want we want it's it. It's so good. I want to try it's it. It's so good. What I did get is if I got my ashwagandha like, dropper yeah. that you had me get. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, <Shuganda's laughs> gross. Oh. Yeah. What are you, a baby? Just take oh, it. Oh wow. Oh, oh, wow. You know what? I'm trying to remember what it, it, it what means. It, it works. <laughs> the shittier. I don't put lead in your yeah. pencil. Why don't you? Yeah, why, why don't you squirt it? To tell me. Why don't you squirt in a glass of Hawaiian punch? I don't know. That's what it's, it, it says to do. That it do, does not make. I never gave a shit about the taste of. No, it's not even that, bro. It's not like. I don't mind. Yeah, it tastes like shit. I know. Yeah, it's like shit because it's it's it's, <laughs> it's not like it's a there's tincture. A t- there's it's like yeah, feces yeah. like it's, in your and mouth. And it's strong. Yeah. It's. I feel like I'm putting like uh, something that's not supposed to go in my mouth in my mouth. Yeah. Like well, it, I won't be the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why, why stop now? On chew, that. Chew, <laughs> chew on that. Yeah, <laughs> dick. Yeah. Bring on the mockingbird. <laughs> Today's Quaz is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quaz. The eagle has landed. Quaz. Our first question is from Lauren Bergman. I'm trying to increase my steps and it's freezing outside. I've started using a treadmill when I need to finish getting in my steps. I see a ton of people incline walking on the treadmill. Is it more beneficial to do a high incline and hold on to the handles or decrease incline and don't hold on? I picked this question because mm. it seems so simple and obvious, but I actually think it's a question that I've been asked a lot before. And I used to tell clients when I'd see this, like I'd see, I'd tell them to go do 20 minutes of cardio or whatever. And then I'd look over and they'd be on the Stairmaster and they'd be hunched over. Uh, and just their shoot. legs. Just like yeah, leaning and, and on like, it and, with their forearms. And I would tell them, I'd say, listen, if you want, you could slow it down by about half and stand upright and work on your posture at the same time. And you get... Not only do you get the extra benefits of working on your posture and your core to hold you upright, right. but you'll probably end up burning more calories because you're making more of your body have to work at the yeah. same time. Do you With- know why they don't do that? <laughs> the reason why they don't do that is because it's actually harder to do it right, even <laughs> yeah. if you slow down. Yeah. It's actually harder. Right. And because people like the number on the machine. Yeah. It, it makes it like- feel better for some reason. Uh, yeah. Because it, yeah, it, it feeds into that like uh accomplishing something like you know doing something super intense but they're not doing something super intense they're like really honestly like you said making it easier for them there's yeah. a, there's there is also the other camp too that does it because they they do the incline trying to get more glute activation right so they they think get that a bigger range of motion right so they think they're going to get this they're going to get more butt by uh, doing maybe that. we should break the news to them you're not going to build any muscles on a treadmill <laughs> so it really doesn't matter if you're hitting more glutes oh, or hitting man. more you're not going to build uh, muscle. If you want to hit your glutes, go go lift weights. Yeah. The treadmill is for cardiovascular activity to right. burn calories, to get get your steps in. So, and that's you know, it's good that we said that because a lot of people still have the misperception that they're going to do cardio to target right. an area of the body. Like, oh, I like this you know side to side ski machine because I need to work on my outer thighs, yeah. or I want to tone up my arms, so I'm going to use the rower, or 
<clears throat> when you go into that cardiovascular, you know, uh, when you're in, when you're doing cardiovascular work, you're not anaerobic. You're not really causing muscle growth. You're just doing. You're building endurance in those target areas, but you're not really working. Though you're not really going to cause visible change in the muscles at all. Areas. At all. I mean, Dude, not- my favorite. I saw a guy. So you've seen. I mean, you may have seen like a girl do this before, but I've seen a guy where you know the the step mill where you do the flared kickback. Thing? Oh, the yeah. ballerina. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, I saw a guy do that. I you almost died. You saw a dude doing that? Yeah. Wow. I saw a dude. Wow. They're working on them glutes. I had at one time, I was years ago at the Hillsdale before they even moved that club. So the original Hillsdale. So I must have been 18. You went at Home Depot. Yeah, I must have been 18 years old. And there was a lady, an old lady. So back then, the front desk faced the cardio. So the front desk, and there was the entrance. So people would walk in. So you'd check them in, and they'd walk by you to work out in the, in the machine weight area or whatever, go to the locker room. Or they could walk in. And they could go straight left, and then there's cardio right there. Of course, usually they go to the locker room and they come back out. But the, so the cardio was in front of us. Back in those days, uh, equipment was in separate rooms. You had your cardio room, your weight room, your machine room. Everything's all in one room nowadays. But that's how it was back then. So I'm looking at the cardio, and you know I'm scanning people in, and you know that's where I, I would hang out a lot of times as a as a trainer to book assessments and stuff like that because it's a great way to talk to people. And I'm looking in the back, and the treadmills made up the back row. Mm-hmm. And the last row of the treadmills was in front of the window. So they, they used to have these big windows in front of the cardio to try, of course, try and sell membership. So people walk by and look inside the window and see cardio, see all this wonderful cardio equipment. So in that back row, there's this old lady, probably, I want to say in her late, maybe late 60s, mid to late 60s. And she's on the treadmill and I'm just watching her because it's slow. It's like the middle of the day. And I could tell she's trying to figure out how to use the treadmill. Like she's like hitting buttons and not knowing what's going on. She's standing on it. And so I'm watching her because I'm thinking, I'm going to go walk over to her and talk to her about personal training. Mm-hmm. I could just see this. And you know, if you worked in a gym long enough, you could start to see right, right. who you, you know, when you have your Dude, opportunities. The, the, deer the, in the, head, the deer in the headlight look on yeah. cardio equipment or machines is always like a yeah, great. That's a great uh, way to talk great, about training. Yeah, right. intro. So I'm watching her and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I think I might go over. And then, oh, oh no, it looks like she figured it out and the treadmill starts run, starts working. But I'm seeing what she's doing, and I see that she's the treadmill's moving, but she's hitting the board with her finger like beep 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 beep. beep. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> hasn't caught up yet. Right, and I'm right, and oh, I'm no. watching her. I'm like, oh shit! Oh, no. I'm like, she doesn't realize that it takes a second. That speed thirteen is much faster. Than yeah, like, than a like power walk. It's not instant, right? Because right now she's at a level half oh, one. No, dude. She's probably hit that thing to fifteen. It's going to all start to kick in really quick. So I'm watching. I'm like, what is she hitting that button for? And it hasn't fully registered yet. How far away are you? I'm pretty far. So I'm oh, like no. yeah. from here to where, so you know, to Taylor's like, office what is. You're going to yell like, I already hey, know. hold on. I already, don't I already get on that. Well, I'm already starting to try to figure it out. And so because she's hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And then it starts speeding up. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I go around the front desk and I start walking towards her. By this point, the thing is starting to pick up speed. She grabs onto the handles. She's uh, go, 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 trying to walk with her feet. So now you see her doing all these like crazy steps. So then I'm yelling as I start to like walk fast over there. Because at this point, I'm relatively new in the gym. I still feel kind of uncomfortable running through the gym yelling. You know, once you get comfortable, like I'll do, fuck it, I'll walk around naked in the gym. Yeah. I don't care, members, whatever. But in the early days, I'm kind of like, you know, you feel kind of awkward. Like, you don't yeah, want to yell yeah. across. A little insecure about it. Yeah. So I start walking faster. She's, her steps start speeding up. I can see her hips start to flip because she doesn't know what she's doing. So <laughs> no. now I'm like, oh, shit. So I start to kind of walk faster. Her feet come out from under her. The treadmill's still speeding up. Oh, no. She doesn't let go. What? So she's holding on to the handles. <laughs> she's holding on the handles. Like, like Superman? And it's bzzz, And it's pulling it's pulling her sweats off her <laughs> so it's like and it's pulling her sweats off oh, no. so now i'm yelling hit the stop button because there's people next to her and everybody's big just, red button yeah everybody's just looking at her like huh so i run over there and i hit the stop button but i think when i hit the stop button she either got tired and let go or she thought it's gonna stop all of a sudden so she just it, let go on her face she just let go and it fucking fired her, dude, into the back back window. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you ever seen someone get fired off of a treadmill? I ha- so uh, I had yeah because those things are strong, dude. The irony dude. that you're telling this story that is fucking... that I worked I worked Hillsdale after it moved. So this is at the the second the new, lo- yeah. the new location, and the treadmills were in the back row where the Group X was, yeah. and behind it was all the glass. That's right. There, and we used to have this kid that used to come in. He was probably about twelve years old. 
and his uh, his mom or his dad would come in with him and they'd go lift weights and then he would do cardio and he had Tourette's. And so he would run on the treadmill or the elliptical and, you know, he'd be, legs would be flopping, arms would be flopping, and yelling, fuck shit, fuck shit. And, then, oh, and no. people, ass. Right, people would come and, and complain all the time and I'd have to explain, like, he has Tourette's and everything like that. And then people felt bad afterwards and it'd be like, no big deal. Yeah. Well, he did the exact same thing on the treadmill one day. And I remember watching him and seeing him because I always keep an eye on the kid because I always, whenever he would come in, it was like clockwork. He'd be here for a little bit. Sooner or later, he would offend somebody. Someone come to me, and then I'd explain the story. So when the kid come in, I know. Right? I'm already watching yeah. him, keep an eye on him, keep an eye on the people around him, so with that. And I try to be proactive and tell people. So I see him, and I see him get on the treadmill, and just like you're saying, he grabs on the handles, boop, 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 boop. he's pushing the button super fast. I'm going like, oh, shit, this kid is not going to... And then you just see him he's just... going for lights. He's holding on with dear life, and his legs are just running as fast as he possibly can, and then he just can't keep up anymore, and just hits the, <laughs> hits the, yeah, hits the ground, and then that thing shoots him like fucking kaboom, oh. right? It bounces it'll, off it'll, the glass. It'll fire you oh, it off. It'll it does, shoot you man. good. It's it for real. fuck around. Yeah. No, like, like the lady got thrown off like flew into the window like yeah. if like if a big strong man threw her yeah yeah <laughs> it's pretty crazy so now that we went yeah. off subject Those okay injuries are yeah uh, you know here's the good thing about uh cardio or treadmill now if you're gonna do cardio i know i'm gonna say this and everybody's gonna be like uh, but I, if you had to pick a cardio machine i would pick the treadmill but here's why every step or every time you do a movement is a rep now it's not a rep like you would do with resistance training uh, in the sense that it's not building muscle and strength, but it is reinforcing or strengthening or creating a pattern, a recruitment pattern. So the treadmill is a great opportunity to perfect how you walk. Right. So you can go slow and really focus on the biomechanics of your feet, the way they strike the floor, the, the treadmill, the way you move your arms, how tall you stand. And you're upright, which is better than being on a bike. That's right. hunched over, now hold, reinforcing that. That's right. And holding on to the handles is is really not a good idea because you're going to reinforce or strengthen a recruitment pattern that involves you holding on to some handles. And if look, I'll tell you what. Uh, I've worked with lots of special populations people, uh, elderly people, and I always tried to prevent my or to keep my clients from using things like a walker, or a cane, because once they started using a walker or a cane, I would immediately start to see changes in their recruitment patterns. I would start to see changes in their posture because they started reinforcing that, you know, this is how I walk now. I have a walker. Or this is how I walk. I have a cane. Yeah, you become dependent on it. You, you become dependent and your body starts to move like that. So I don't think it's a good idea to hold on to the handles the whole time just because you're going faster. You know, perfect your form, like Adam says. Take your hands off. Well, and the irony is, you're the the main reason why most people are on the piece of cardio equipment is to burn fat, right? I think yeah, most people burn calories. right burn calories and burn fat. You'll actually burn more calories and more fat not using the handles going faster. So if you're better off walking at a three or a two and a half speed with good mechanics posture mm -hmm. than you are at a four holding onto the handles. Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, no matter what your goal is, right? So I think that that's the big takeaway. And that, I mean, the reason why I want to ask, answer that question is I feel like it does seem so obvious maybe for some people, but it's actually a very common question yep. that I've been asked a ton of times. And I still, to this day, see more than half the people on the cardio equipment doing it like this, hunched yep. over, like crazy, bad posture while they're doing it. It's like, listen, if you're on there to burn fat, like why not work on well, your posture at the same time and with less effort? It's because, yeah, they're they're like not being present in that movement. They're just getting through it, right? right. Which is what most people uh, do when they get into the gym. Like with every exercise, they're trying to find a way to just get through the workout as opposed to uh, doing things with intention. And, I used to people talk about it like that. Like, oh, I do level four. On the treadmill. Right, right. I did level five and an incline of seven. Like, they know their numbers. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I used to do the the Stairmaster, you know, being the guy with no calves, right? I used to do the Stairmaster really slow, and every step I used to calf do raise. calf raise. Posture up, good, and like super slow. Super slow step. I'll tell you what, dude. You do that for fucking, that'll, for five minutes? Oh, yeah. five minutes. You'll be burning some oh, calories. Oh, you're burning some calories, you're blessed, and then, hey, well, I'm kind of doing a trigger on my calves at the same time. Kyle Terrell Fitness. How do you guys define training to failure? I've always followed a perfect form rule, meaning once I break form, that's failure. Would you agree? Or should I be looking at this a different way? 
I, I, that's how I would define I like failure. that definition. Uh, yeah. But that is not how a lot of people define failure. I think a lot of people define lifting to failure as... You can't move it anymore. Yeah. I can't move it even with... Or you can't even get it like halfway up. Yeah, I, even with a relatively shitty form, yeah. I can't move it anymore. So you see somebody who's bench pressing and they go to failure where the form breaks down and now they're, they're pushing their hips off the bench and they're cutting their reps short... To yeah. squeeze out, you know, one or two more. This is where people need like that gym buddy. That's well, this be is what built in spotter. Yeah, That's but this right. is also why I used to hate gym buddies and spotters because not a lot of people get this. A lot of people think that if I call you over and I want you to spot me, that's because I am trying to take it right to failure, but I don't ever want to fail. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want you to intervene at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't want you. I, well, no, I don't want you to admit, let me stick. Like, I don't want to stick. Yeah. I don't want to stick it because I know as soon as I stick, yeah, what I'm, I'm going to overcompensate yeah, in other areas. Something's going to twist. Right. Whatever. So I want you to. That's I, a good point. I want you to watch my tempo. So the only workout partners that I ever allowed to even work out with me understood the way I wanted to be spotted is the same way which I, I would spot somebody. Which Dude, you got to go into I more- Watch, I watch tempo, and I'm I'm riding you five reps before you even need it. My fingers are right there because I'm I want to keep your tempo the entire time so you can work. Dude, on that the is so you, that is such an important yeah. uh, tip right there. We got to go into more detail so people really understand what you're talking about because a lot of times when people spot somebody, they throw in the spot when the person can't lift it anymore. Right, yeah, and at that the point, it's too late when it's broke. Yeah. yeah, so like if I'm benching and I get halfway up and someone's watching me struggle and I'm. Uh, and I, I can barely move it, and it's inching up, inching up. They won't help me until it starts to go down. Mm-hmm. Then they'll spot me. Right. The reality is a, a really good spot is exactly what you're saying, Adam, where my tempo is it should take me two or three seconds to lift the bar. Don't let it slow down beyond that. Because once it sticks, you know, f- for example, using the bench press as an example, once my bench press sticks, I might have a tendency to twist my yes, body or yes. lift my shoulder. You're go or go right to left yes, or left to right. Yeah, so even though I now, because I did that, I was able to get the bar up, uh, I did now a rep that I didn't want to do, which is you know creating a bad recruitment pattern. Right. So that's absolutely, uh, that's a brilliant well, thing and, to bring and up. And think about it. We And this is, I think tempo is something that's overlooked so much. And it's like, it's, it's another variable in your training that you should be utilizing. And... You know, if if you're training in a one one max effort today, then that's different, right? So today you're shooting for a max and you're trying to go up. And sh- but for the most part, most people are lifting five, six, eight, ten, fifteen rep- reps, and I most certainly don't want to fail at eight. And you wait till I fail, then you spot me, and then you also spot me for three more after that. Like no force reps. Yeah, those force reps I know mechanically are broken down, and the little bit of benefit you get by pushing the body to that is minimal in comparison to the poor recruitment pattern that you're creating by doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this is uh, failure training creates uh, more little more muscle damage than not going to failure. So if you were to stop like a couple reps short of it, you won't cause as much damage. Um, it definitely stresses the central nervous system a little more. Now, a lot of people would say that's a good thing. A lot of people would say, oh, it's good that it causes more muscle damage and that you hammer the CNS Applied more. correctly, it could. It, I would say judiciously, right. occasionally. Mm. For the most part, probably not. For the most part, you're better off training a little bit more frequently with less failure. And this is just based off of experience, and studies now are, are supporting this as well. Mm. And, and failure training is this. Failure training means that you're always pushing your body to the max. Your max changes depending on, you know, how your body feels that particular day, but it's always max effort, and sometimes max effort is too much. And what I mean by that is it it compromises recovery. It may actually cause you to go backwards. It may cause your body to prioritize recovery over adaptation. It also adapts you to that level of training just to maintain where you're currently at also. So now you have to... That's why some of these people struggle with that because they, they've they've uh, ramped up their intensity so hard and so high that that's yeah. the way they have to train in order to ever look like that because they've adapted their body to that that intense and that amount of volume. So yeah, if, if, if at all, it's like very very sparingly that it'll be used. But I do use it to then express and and stretch out my capacity. Right. So if I build up a new standard of maximal effort, um, you know, now I know that my my capacity is greater so I can build up into that to where that's a comfortable new norm. But that takes, it's, it's, it's a lot more time than people think. It's not something that I'm repeating very often, if if ever. It wasn't really a big thing in muscle building until 
Mike Menser uh, popularized it, and then Dorian Yates really took it to the next level. So back in the day, bodybuilders would lift hard. They would just lift hard and heavy. But they didn't say lift to failure. They would just say, I just worked out really hard. Yeah. And bodybuilders sometimes lift to failure and sometimes didn't lift to failure. Famous examples of bodybuilders that did lots of volume, like ridiculous amounts of volume, but didn't lift to failure. People like Serge Nubre, Arnold Schwarzenegger sometimes would lift to failure, sometimes he wouldn't. Tom Platts uh, sometimes would, sometimes wouldn't. You know, these bodybuilders kind of knew that they knew they would add lots of volume, they would increase frequency. I know Arnold trained his entire body three times a week, but he did a shit ton of volume on top of it. His recovery ability was uh, like freaking Hercules. It was uh, ridiculous. Then you have Mike Menser who came out with his book, Heavy Duty. And Mike Menser, him and his brother, Ray Menser, were two bodybuilders who had very impressive physiques. Now, neither one of them won an Olympia. Um, arguably, Mike Menser uh, is an uncrowned uh, Olympia. Um, I think in 1980, he competed against Arnold and got really pissed off that he didn't even place, I think, in the top three. But nonetheless... <coughs> He writes this book called Heavy Duty, and what he says is you don't need to do tons of volume because in those days, what they glamorized wasn't failure. What they glamorized was volume, how long you were in the gym. So if you were lifting weights and you were trying to build muscle in the 70s, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the most part, you were talking about how many sets you did. Yeah, how many sets, Rich. And it was about 20 sets. Everybody was doing 20, 21 sets, and then you had guys pushing 30 and 40 sets like Serge Nubre. Mike Menser comes out and says, too much volume isn't good. Volume creates endurance. We want strength. What we need to do is is send the muscle building signal once and then leave it alone. And he said, failure is the best way to do it because you know for sure you sent that muscle building signal because you've hit the wall. He viewed the muscle building signal as a switch on or off when it's not really that way. It's more of a continuous, it's more of like a uh, one of those light switches where it's a dimmer, where it can be a little louder, a little less. It's not on or off. It's like you, right. you send some signal, more signal, you know, or less signal. He said it's a switch. He was incorrect about that. But he popularized training to failure one set per body part once a week. And that's what he did. And that's what he talked about. And it became popular because you had all these lifters, these generations of lifters who were doing 20, 30 sets per body part, who were not taking anabolic steroids, who were frying their bodies all of a sudden, they drastically change the stimulus, switch over to one set to failure, and then leave their body alone, and boom. I'm stronger. They respond. Yeah. And of course, you're going to respond. It's a big change. It's a big switch, right? Mm. So it kind of gained some popularity. Uh, Arthur Jones, the inventor of Nautilus equipment, did something called the Colorado Experiment, where he demonstrated on a bodybuilder, a young Casey Viator, how effective it was, and they used it before and after. And it kind of gained a little bit of steam, but it didn't get super popular until Dorian Yates became Mr. Olympia. Mm. And Dorian Yates hits the stage, I think, 1993, I believe, and was just this... Nobody had ever seen a guy that m- massive and chiseled. I mean, Lee Haney was big, but Dorian Yates was just a whole new level of bodybuilder. And he trained in this fashion where he would do five exercises for a body part, but he would only do one set to failure on each one. Way less volume than most bodybuilders course he's mr olympia now everybody wants to do what mr olympia is doing right and it became popular again and and since then it's this whole like lift to failure lift to failure do you lift to failure do you not lift to failure here's the thing intensity is a uh it's definitely a a factor but it's not the only factor and i think we you know we place too much emphasis on intensity and we forget about all those other things and if you max out one of those factors you take away from you know, some of the other important factors like frequency and volume. If I'm going balls to the wall on barbell squats, like, have you ever done an, a real absolute set of failure squats? Have you ever really done that? <laughs> yes, okay. I have. It so sucks. it's, it, 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 here's the thing. Like, if you're an experienced lifter, I, I implore you to try this. Not because it's going to grow your legs, but just because you don't know what failure is until you've done failure in squats. Yeah. There are there are times when I, th- like, I've done failure sets of squats And I thought I hit failure a good 10 reps before I actually hit failure. That's how it feels with squats. You're like, okay, that's the last one. And then you tell yourself, let me try one more. Oh, my God, I can barely move. Let me try one more. And it's like you actually do 10 more than you think you could. Right. And your body just shuts down. And you're fucked. You're fucked. You're You're done. You're done with your whole – What are you going to do with that? Yeah, there's nothing you can do. So – there goes your volume. I'm not doing anything else for legs. Nope. And if I try to for a couple a, days, you're it, just it's a fucked. waste. Yeah. Frequency, not gonna do it because I'm gonna hammer my body. So I've taken two other important factors and throw them in the garbage and just focus on intensity. And that's why failure, why we tell people probably not a good idea to train to failure most of the time. And it through experience, through training people, we've observed 
This is true. And if you're somebody that lifts to failure all the time, cut your reps, or excuse me, cut your sets short, do two reps short of failure, and watch your body respond right and, away. And that goes for even this person who I think has got a great uh, mentality with right. it, which is as soon as form breaks down, short of two of that even. Right. Because you're you're still fatiguing the muscle by taking it all the way to where form breaks down. Like that would be going to failure right there. Right. So you want to actually stop it every now and then one to two reps short of that and pay attention to your training. Like I think that'll make a big difference for a lot of people. Next question is from David Soros Rex. How would you balance training while trying to work full time and being a supportive husband, new dad with a baby that is messing with both parents' sleep schedule? Well, this is for you guys. Oh, mm. man, you got to weather the storm. Your workout's priority for everything else. Yeah. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> baby will survive. Hire you know, a maid. You know what, though? Yeah. I would like to ask you guys this because I feel like there is some truth to this, though. Do you, don't you feel like you're a better dad, you get more stuff done, you're more productive at work when, you do, when you're do when you training, and when you're not, you're kind of falling short on those areas? You cannot. Sure. It's a balance act. You can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're tired, stressed out, angry, anxious, unhealthy, overweight, you're not going to be as effective as a dad, as a partner, um, as a husband, you know, as a whatever. At work, you're not going to be as good at those things because you just don't feel good. So there's that. So exercise will actually give you more time with your baby, more quality time with your wife, and those types of things. Yeah, it is going to be compromised, though, being a new dad right. and, and having that new kind of a... It's a new, it's a new high priority, It's a new right? vi- variable in the mix, right? So, And it's not just you. It's also your wife or you know partner or whoever um, that you have to look out for because the signs are there that you really want to pay attention to. The over, overstressed, you know, like um, just, just being able to provide an outlet for them as well. So, like, you both need that. You both need something else to get outside of the environment, come back fresh, get, bring new energy, kind of rotate that. Me and uh, my wife actually got pretty good about that as far as like seeing signs of like, okay, you need some time. You need to go uh, spend some time at the gym, go on a hike, do whatever you got to do. You know, you, you do whatever you got to do. And do you guys have like those. a system in place where like, you know, she goes one week that she's responsible for getting up with the kids or doing some of that? I mean, do you guys have, have you guys? It's it, just, it's a constant like in and It's out. an ebb and flow. There's yeah. not like a schedule there's not like it's just that i can tell pay attention to signs and signals and um you know really be responsive and and communicate with your partner and that's i mean that was the best thing for me because it was brutal i mean there's times where especially like when it's an infant it's like you're you're on command like there's the the crying and then there's the the no the sleepless nights all these different things that, that happen and it's like you just feel like uh, I'm not going to be productive in my workout today, so therefore I'm gonna just going to do something like mobility-wise, or at least get some movement involved, and then come back, and then you know try and alleviate uh, uh, my wife to so she can go do something else and just get clear her mind. You know. Yeah, I've trained quite a few people who um, would hire me before they got pregnant, and then they'd have they'd be pregnant during the workout, and then afterwards, and so I could see the tra- the the morphing of how much time they can spend working out. And what I found is you can realistically, a lot of people can do two days a week in the gym when you have all the stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend to people typically was two full body workouts a week in the gym, do them, make them hard, make them heavy, have a good time. If you're uh, really tired or whatever, of course, reduce the intensity, but two full body workouts in the gym and then trigger sessions you can do anywhere. Yeah. And that's what I used to recommend to people. Like when you have your baby with you and you're holding your baby, you could do trigger sessions. You could do trigger sessions with your baby. You could, oh, yeah. you know, you could do all these. Hike, di- take, you take it outside, you know, like do that's all kinds it. of stuff. Do all the stuff with the kid and then you're set. Now, are you going to be able to train for, you know, an event? No. You, you know, uh, someone, something's going to have to give. You're not going to be a bodybuilder or a bikini competitor, you're not going to be able to right. do you know super high levels of performance when you're trying to also be engaged with you know your your baby and your spouse. Right, you know, just not going to happen. But two days a week in the gym with trigger sessions on your off days, totally doable because again, the trigger sessions can be done Dude, anywhere. Trigger sessions are a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially for that type of a scenario because you just pick up whenever. Like right, you'll get, get some, you'll get, get an opportunity, a ten minute little window. You're right, right, get, get some of, get some of your bands in the nursery and Dude. shit, man. Be doing some of your band just exercises. Con- just work on volume. My yeah. sister used the baby as a, a weight. Yeah. So she would hold her baby and she would do standing squats, which by the way, babies love. If you hold the baby in your hands and you do squats with him, yep. 
they fall asleep. It's like the best rocking method ever. Uh, she would do walking lunges or she would lay on her back and she'd hold the baby at arm's length and press it up and bring do him down and give the baby and a kiss. That. And yeah, like yeah, I put on my legs and then like do some uh, leg lifts and stuff. Uh, we so. should make a guide. You know, how to exercise with baby. <laughs> no, it's actually baby there's, lifts. There's big, I almost did it for boot camps. I think we just need a baby. I think there's a company called Striders, or, that. Yeah. which is mothers with strollers or something like that. And there's a whole boot camp. There was boot camps with moms with their, their kids and strollers and shit. We could put we could put Doug in little jammies and then. You, <laughs> We yeah, just re- yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about trigger sessions big though. Old diaper. You just remind me of something that I don't think we've even announced on the show in a very long time. Like if you guys haven't, we, we uh, the website's been revamped at mindpumpmedia.com, and uh, we sell a lot of bands, and we don't talk about them at all. So a lot of people yeah. don't know that we have, and most of the programs have what are called trigger sessions uh, in them, where you actually would use bands at home or in a hotel or on the go or whatever multiple times a day. And even if you're not following a maps program and you want bands, I mean, there's right. uh, they're on the website. It comes well, with maps really... anywhere is perfect too, right. as well as far as a structured workout you can do at your house. That, right. that would be really helpful. And they're well, quality the, bands. No, these bands are badass. That, I mean, yeah. the, the best ones I've ever came across, and it comes with the the door hinge thing, so you could stick it in any door, and it comes with the handles. Like it's a nice little kit of the, like the three the three major uh, strength differences between them. Next question is from Tyler Urian. You guys have talked about target heart rates being outdated, but as a current kinesiology student and trainer and group fit instructor at a university, they are still teaching us about working out in heart rate zones or at percentages of maximum heart rates. Can you guys go into detail on your opinions about using heart rate as a means to measure intensity and effectiveness of a workout? I think I think using it as a tool for intensity is it's okay. It's just one metric. It is, but I think it's. I think if if I'm if I'm trying to gauge like how hard am I pushing this person and and I'm measuring their heart rate, I think it's actually a very valid tool to do that. Now, I don't think it's a very valid tool for effectiveness of a workout, hmm. but I do think it is a good measure for intensity. Like if if I put Susie on the treadmill and her target heart rate, whatever generic we use the Carvonium theory, right, and we get to her. Her target heart rate. What is was that, by the way? Was it two twenty minus their age yeah. times yeah. Di- yeah. point so six five at back to age? Generic. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Carvonium, right? Carvonium. And so you know, so let's say we get Susie's target heart rate, and it's it's one thirty five to one forty five. Let's just say for argument's sake, and I know that. And today I put her on the treadmill, and she's she's pushing her heart rate at one fifty. Like I I'm not I'm not hung up on oh my god she's above her heart rate i need to bring her back down as much as i am like oh this is what she looks like when she's working at 150 so i know when i get her on the treadmill next week is she at 150 again or she at 120 that's a good that's a good way to kind of look at it as far as like looking at the metrics and seeing what um you know the state of her conditioning or, or how she's breathing and you know all these different factors if you look at that and you compare it with the actual like data and the metrics of it um, otherwise for me, it's always just like looking at the person and seeing, uh, signs of fatigue and signs of, of breathing really hard and, you know, cold, clammy sweat, you know, like <laughs> the eyes, like all these different factors I think are so much more important, uh, as a coach to look for, uh, while people are going through their conditions. Well, target, target heart rate is, is like uh, driving your car at the perfect RPMs. That's all it is. And then, and what I mean by that is like when you are, you know, when you're driving the average vehicle, staying between 22 and 2,500 RPMs is the most ideal place for you to conserve your gas, right? That's kind of how cardio is when you're in the target heart rate zone. It's the most efficient place for us to burn fat at. But the faster you go, okay, the more calories you're going to burn. So, it's a, so it doesn't it's, matter. So it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So it totally takes that whole idea of like training just in the maximum no. heart rate. Like, no, if you I, could, I could see a benefit for training um, high level athletes. That's yes. the only time I'd ever use it. Yes. Okay. So I, I use this competing. Yeah. When I, when I was getting ready for stage, I used uh, heart rate tools and things like that a lot. I don't use it right now because it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me very much. But when I am so dialed that, I'm measuring and weighing every every bit of food that goes in, and I know to the calorie where I'm at, how below maintenance I am. I know if I'm running below maintenance and my body's already catabolic, I'm not really. I don't want to push beyond my target heart rate. So there, to me, it has some value, right? I'm five percent body fat, so I don't have very much stored energy as it is. I'm already in a caloric deficit, so my body's already catabolic. 
I don't need to push beyond my target heart rate. In fact, if I, I want to stay in my target heart rate to maximize the amount of fat I'm burning without flirting with anything else, sure, it has some it has some weight. But there. even going beyond that, I'm I'm talking about like athletes where I'm trying to improve their VO2 max, or I'm trying to improve their their the, ability the to threshold. yeah, their ability to hit max heart rate oh, and yeah. to come back down yeah, and yeah. go back up. But the average client, like I don't look, I don't give a shit about your heart rate. I'll ask you yeah. how you feel. Like if you're if you're on a exactly. treadmill or I'm training you. And I see your heart rate is high, is 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 low, and I ask you like, how do you feel? And you're like, oh my god, it's so hard. I can. I'm not gonna be like, no, your heart rate's slow. You're yeah. fucking lying. I'm gonna put. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to what you say. You know, I'm gonna use your feedback. And so, it's something I I rarely ever use heart rate unless I'm monitoring someone's heart rate because they're on a beta blocker or because there's something having to do with their heart that I have to be careful with, or if they're an elite, you know, endurance competitive athlete where. We are trying to, you know, depending on the sport, like if I'm training a, a boxer, I want to be able to get them up to max heart rate, but I want them to be able to bring their heart rate back down very quickly while they're resting in between rounds. And there's particular types of training that you can do for that. Otherwise, totally. And, then, you know, here's why you do it at your university. I'll tell you why. You're teaching a class, right. yeah. and they want to give you something uh, that's tangible. tangible. Yeah, right. That's, that's it. it. The yeah. problem with the science, though, is they don't take it there. And the reason why we knock on it is because it doesn't take into account all the variables. Yep. No. So because Susie, uh, who ate two hours before she decides to do target heart rate cardio, is completely different than Susie, who has fasted, and is completely different than Susie, who has over-consumed yeah. a thousand calories Susie, a day. Susie, who almost got in a car accident. Right. Yeah. Susie, yeah. who actually- Who drank a cup of coffee. Who has, yeah. Who's you super know? stressed out from earlier that day, and then she gets on and decides to do cardio. So all, Susie, the same fucking person with the same goals, is going to be affected differently all three different ways. So there's too many- ver So the, the science that, that they hang on to at these universities University still that drives me crazy that we they, they still are teaching trainers this much or hanging on to it that much to where it's something they coach to it's like I think you should know it I think you should understand it I think there's mm -hmm. some merit to it but to attach yourself to it or to get hung up on it like we did I remember it was a selling point for us like that well, I used to go around scaring everybody yeah. that if you didn't know your target heart rate zone then you're missing out on it the just best way brings to burn everything fat. back to like a clinical controlled setting which doesn't really translate to real life right. ever and it's but it's great because you could sort of keep all the variables and you can understand like what's going on and then like provide all the data and like keep it all organized but that's not life so mm -hmm. it's it, that's what's so tough because like they can write a book about it and like have it all like neat and tight and this is if this then that you right. know and it like actually like happens like that but yeah. Yeah, i haven't found that to be speaking the case. of heart rates i remember when i first became a dad you remember when they do the ultrasound and then you're listening to the heart baby's heart? Mm -hmm. Remember how did it freak you out how fast it was? Yeah, du -du 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 yeah, because yeah, the baby's heart. So yeah. it's like, yeah. oh yeah. shit, what's it's going a, on? It's a trip. I know. <laughs> ah! and they're like, no, 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 it's just a. So uh, I was yeah. looking this up while we were talking. The Miguel Endurian, a Spanish cyclist and five-time Tour de France winner, had a resting heart rate. Of 28 beats per minute. Damn, that's Dude. lower than even Lance Armstrong. They adapt. So, yeah, it's the thing. I 28 mean, beats crazy. per minute. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. That is the like slowest. He's so efficient at, at you know, cardiovascular. Wow, movement. I've never heard anybody lower than Lance until that right what there. What was that's Lance? Crazy. Lance was 30, 35 or 39. He was in the 30s, I know that, oh. which I thought was crazy. Still I don't crazy. And you're, okay, so go back to you guys. I think the best I've ever seen is in the low 50s. I don't think I've seen even personally? 40s. Yeah, personally. Um, I don't even think I've had 40s, and I've trained tons of athletes. I think I might have seen the 50s. To be, uh, I yeah, don't know. I don't I've know seen. If I've seen that. I've seen 50s, and maybe I've trained some co maybe collegiate, a cyclist, level, yeah. collegiate level athletes, that endurance athletes that I've seen that have that low, but I've never seen lower than 50 something, dude. Wow. Well, yeah. check this out. That's so, crazy. Check this out. So a blue whale. You have you ever, you ever seen the size of a heart of a blue whale? No. I think you can walk through it, right? Mm. Eight to <laughs> eight to ten beats per minute. So it's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah. Uh, and uh, a the fastest one is uh, an Etruscan shrew, one thousand five hundred and eleven beats oh per God. minute. What the fuck? Yeah, does thing just like explode? An insect? Is it like a bug or something? Yeah, no, it's a shrew because a hummingbird is twelve hundred and sixty. Yeah, beats per minute. What does a shrew look like? It's a, like a, it's little, like a mouse. little rodent. It's like a little root. Yeah, mm. like a little mouse, little rodent. That's funny. There you go. Hopefully you. this. Hopefully this episode that got your heart rate very up. informative. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that's your fact of the day. Yeah. Hey, check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. 
Uh, so I did a couple videos with Jason oh, Phillips. Oh boy! And they're controversial. Hot fire as fuck. Check this out. If you share, share them with all your dogmatic religious friends. Yeah, if, if you're a hardcore, <laughs> uh, if you're a hardcore mind pump fan and you want to go hammer on some IIFOM zombies. Uh, yeah. Just go to the YouTube uh, uh, video and read the comments. <laughs> Some yeah. great ammo. Oh, for it's good times. That's right. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.